the brain. It is the most complex organ in the human body. It has always fascinated scientists. Every activity in daily life involves the brain in some way or another. When one practices a sport, the brain precisely plans and executes every movement. The brain is also of considerable interest because it is the target of a great number of drugs, both medicinal and recreational. Drugs enter the body through different pathways. Drugs can enter your body via the skin, like when people use medical patches to cure diseases. Drugs can also be injected into the blood vessels. This is how heroin is administered. Some drugs are swallowed, like drugs that come in the form of pills. Magic mushrooms and alcohol also fall into this category. Many drugs enter the body in the form of smoke through the respiratory system. Cigarettes containing nicotine or marijuana deliver drugs to the body in this manner. Finally, some drugs are drawn in through the nose where they can directly enter the bloodstream. Despite the fact that these drugs all have different names and that they get into your body through different means, drugs all have to enter the bloodstream before they can reach their main target, the brain. To understand the effects of drugs on the brain, it is important to first understand how the brain works. Scientists have developed methods to study the role of each part of the brain. One of these methods is called electroencephalography. Scientists using this technique place electrodes on a person's head. These electrodes record the activity of the brain. Scientists can then see how different parts of the brain are activated during different tasks. For example, what parts of the brain are activated when you view an image, when you move your arm, or when you do math. Information from the electrodes is transmitted to a computer. This allows scientists to see the activity of each recorded region. It is also possible to study the activity of the brain using brain imaging. Here, the activity of the brain is recorded with a giant magnetic field and is transmitted to a computer to be studied. The techniques used to study the brain have become quite diverse over time. Some have gone beyond simply measuring brain activity and are designed to change brain activity. One such technique, called transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS, involves changing the activity of a given brain region using a strong magnetic field and then observing the resulting changes in behavior in the person. And now Emily, our assistant, has volunteered to test this machine for us. After a couple of times, we can see that her finger is moving without her control. This is happening because she is receiving stimulation to the part of the brain that involves controlling fingers, the primary motor cortex. The use of these and other techniques have allowed scientists to assign different functions to different regions of the brain, forming a map of the brain. Each part of the brain has its own role. Like many complex organizations, the feats of the brain are a result of the division of labor. The brain's various parts work cooperatively. Some parts are dedicated to primary tasks like vision or movement. Other parts are responsible for emotions, drives, or languages. But how does the brain accomplish all that? And what is the brain made of? You need the millions and billions of neurons that are in the brain. So a neuron is a brain cell. It's very, very small. You cannot see it with your own eye. You need you know, a microscope or something very, to, to enlarge it very much. And basically, a neuron has three parts. The first part receives information from another neuron. Okay? And then the information has to travel through the neuron. And when it, it's at the end of the neuron, it has to be transmitted to another neuron. And by doing this, every neuron talks to every neuron. Okay, so the information can get transmitted where it is supposed to go, to go. The brain is composed of neurons. They are the basic elements of the brain. They are responsible for carrying information. They can receive and send information to other neurons through their branches. The receiving branches are called dendrites, and the sending branches are called axons. Electrical signals can pass through dendrites and axons. This is what allows neurons to carry information. The contact between two neurons is called a synapse. Drugs exert their effects by changing what happens at the synapse. The information will travel through the neuron with electricity. It's basically an electrical signal. <laughs> okay? Once it gets at the end of the neuron, okay, 
it will release a chemical signal. So the, the, the message goes from being electrical to being chemical. So it will release these little substances, very, very small. And these little substances will go to the new neurons who will catch it and then transmit it through electricity to the other neuron and so and so until it gets where it is supposed to go. They release transmitters from little, little um, processes that contain transmitters that are contained in, in little um, vesicles with very small compartments in which the transmitters are concentrated. And when neurons receive electrical signals, they release transmitter which will diffuse and, inf and act upon receptors on other cells and this will allow for uh, some, a relay of the information from one cell to the other in the nervous system and this is critical for information processing in the central uh, nervous system in the brain.